Hi guys, as you can see, I'm out in a hot forest. I'm not lost, I promise you. I know there's a path somewhere here. And today we're gonna do some 3D scanning out here. So uh, let's bring it on. So today we're using my two favorite techniques. We're going to use photogrammetry and show some uh, simple and cheap apps to run that data. We're also going to, also going to do some basic uh, 3 system sense scanning, which should be pretty straightforward. Now you might have seen that there's some interesting background here and it's actually we're on a location where we have a forest fire not too long ago. I think it was a year or two ago. So we have some green grass over here, but we have some more burnt area here. So I will give you guys an overview and we'll check out what we're going to scan. So the first system we'll be using is the 3 system sense. I'm going to plug this into the computer. Unfortunately, I can't record the computer at the same time. So I'm going to have a GoPro here and see if we can get some hands-on perspective on scanning. Now, the scanning here isn't really going as planned. You can see I'm, I'm having some issues. I'm trying to uh, get some good tracking, but right here you see the sun flare. So the issue here is too much sun. I'm going to go back and do another video just on the sense itself because I think it's interesting uh, how easy it is to use as soon as there's not too much light. As you can see here, I did get a model out of it, um, but it's just overexposed. You can see the white dots and everything. Uh, it was really, really difficult in sharp sunlight. So remember that always do it in shade. All right, so that didn't exactly go according to plan. I think one of the issues is that I have a little bit too much light right here. You see, if I step in here, I'm overexposed, so that's one of the difficulties with using a scanner. You should have a overcast, that's the best typical scenario. So I'm gonna hold off with the sand scanner and actually do more of a in-depth on that a little bit later. I'm gonna try on some rocks as well, but the tree trunk here was just too bright. I need to find a more shadowy place. But with that said, we're gonna try uh, a photogrammetry and we'll check that data later. So when you're doing photogrammetry, you wanna use a lens that has a fixed width. So this is a 50 millimeter lens that helps with everything from targeting, helps the softwares later as well. You wanna use it in autofocus if you can. You wanna use a tripod if you have, um, yeah, just always use a tripod. And you wanna get the sharpest possible images. So use a large aperture, so a wide uh, focus field, but also with a time uh, um, a trigger. So maybe two seconds of a trigger that makes sure that you can step away so you don't touch the camera when, when it's taking a picture. You want to neutralize the exposure, so you're going to have a wide exposure. You want to photograph in RAW, so you have the more data. Even if the software won't process raw data, it's always good to have that. And there's always, of course, a few steps when, uh, when doing photogrammetry is that you document. So you want to have something to document outside of the process. So for example, if I'm scanning this area, I need to take just regular pictures. So when I'm in post out of the location, I want to have a possibility to check the data really. Just make sure that I understand where everything is and so on. Also, you want to back up your data and you want to check your data on site. So with photogrammetry, that can be a little bit more difficult because it's taking a lot of processing power, but just check through your images, make sure that they have been focusing and that you have a good overlapping amount of images. So I'm going to photograph this area and uh, you guys are coming along for the ride. Okay, so let's just go through the settings here. So I'm going to use a aperture based. So I'm going to put the apertures a little bit more. Use a little bit higher ISO, but not too much. And I'm going to remove my ND filter because I won't need it here. So that should help with the exposure a little bit. So now we're getting some, some good um, shutter times here, as you can see. And I'm using RAW. I'm using a, um, should be using a single shoot. And for the um, metering, I want to have a evaluate metering so we get as much as possible. So let's just take a picture here, put it to autofocus. That's our picture, it's a little bit far away. Maybe I want to underexpose it just a little bit. All right, so let's do this. Let's go and grab some photos. And this is of the tree trunk. I actually wished it was a little bit more shadowy. Let's, let's take another tree. Let's take this one here. This one is in shadow still. Let's take a photo. So I'm gonna use my automatic autofocusing. focusing. 
also a little bit too sunny here. That's one of the issues. You want to have a neutral lighting and you get that best when you have a overcast. I'm just walking around, taking pictures on the ground, trying not to take too many because I want to use one of the free softwares as well. Oh, that's a bright image. Using the free software will allow me to, um, yeah, just to get, get more of you guys into photogrammetry. Of course, you want to have quite a lot of overlapping on each image. So don't photograph like you're going to document it. You want to have, you see this image and then the next one, do so let's just have a look at those. So you see there's quite a lot of overlapping and that's good for the scanning. And taking some from more above is also good. So you get some good aerial Aerial shots, yep, something like that. Let's see, this tree stump here, stump, I think I need to do some extra on that one, right? Let's add some details here. And I have mosquitoes all over my hands. Now the sun is getting here again, so it's starting to make issues. So we're gonna keep there. Um, Let's just have a look at the images. They look pretty neat. There's a lot of them. Hopefully the scanning software will be able to deal with this. Uh, we'll make a first attempt. We'll see if the software can, can handle that data. But yeah, it is a little bit too, uh, too sunny. So um, I think that's all for this location. Well, okay, one of the things I just realized when editing this video is that it is a little bit in depth. So. If you really don't want to see how the procedure was made, because I'm not going into it into details, because I want to do that in a separate video where we can focus on, for example, uh, Agisoft, uh, Photoscan, and then Remake and all the other software. So that's the reason why it's a little bit choppy right now. So just stick with me and uh, you'll see some results in the end. All right, so the first thing we want to do is just check these images. So for example, if we just look at this one here, get some info about it. I'm just gonna open it here in Photoshop. We can see that it's uh, it's not perfect, um, but yeah, this is why you use a tripod, but we're gonna do this anyway, uh, just to, to show you how it's done. So I have a few of these images. I'm gonna actually cancel this window here because we will use the script tool here and we'll use an image processor. And in here, I have my folder. Uh, so we're gonna select that folder with the scans. So what we want to do here on step number three is actually save as TIFF. So that's the format that uh, Augisoft uh, will handle. I will of course use some other softwares as well. Now I do want to have um, uh, this one here ticked, open first image to apply settings. So let's do that, let's run it. It will open the first of a series of images and we can do a little changes here. I'm actually gonna click auto but then re uh, reduced exposure and actually reduced contrast. So you can see here in the dark areas when I, oops, wrong one. <laughs> when I increase or decrease the contrast, I actually punch out some of the blacks and also lower some of the intense whites. So you can see here, this is the two differences. You don't wanna do it too much um, if you wanna keep colors. So you can see here in this corner, it's important that you don't do this too much if you wanna keep some of that coloring in the image. But let's just do something like that and we'll click uh, done. Now I've already done this, so I'm not gonna bore you with, <laughs> with the results. So we open up uh, Agisoft and there's a, actually a super simple workflow. Well, the button is even called workflow. So we'll, we'll add some photos. I have my TIFF images here. I'll open all of them. This is gonna think a little bit. There we go. So now we have a bunch of images loaded here. Uh, the first thing that we can see is that when, when we've loaded images, we get a function to align the photos. So let's do that. I'm gonna go with medium. Um, not much more than that. This will take a few minutes. I'll probably pause the recording. But this now starts to, uh, to work here. And it's really important that you uh, have as good good of a computer as possible. This is now running 100% on my uh, 4 GHz uh, i7. 
and it's pushing hard. Right now the memory is kind of okay, so this are oh, 16 gigs. You really do want to have more than 16 gig if you can. 32 is, is good, but 64 is even better. And the hardcore uh, photogrammetry scanning people, they usually have 128 or even more memory. But they, they do that for a living, I do this for fun. <laughs> All right, so now there are some, well, it is upside down, but <laughs> uh, this is pretty cool. So we can now see that the images here, this actually represents all the camera uh, shots that I take. And well, obviously I'd <laughs> I did take a few at the same spot or uh, somehow I managed to do that because here I did some close ups over here. Uh, trying to get this this piece of bark a little bit better. So that's that for uh, medium alignment. Now let's go over to workflow again. Now we can build a dense cloud and we want to do that. And actually I'm going to go with high. So this is probably going to take a while as well. So this was a rough um, alignment of the images and you can now start to, well, you can see the point cloud here, uh, which are quite sparse. Um, but we will continue with this and I'll check in with you guys in just a few seconds. All right, so let's check this out. I've zoomed in on the points and if we're zooming back, you can see that we do have quite a lot of points here. So this is the dense point cloud. Uh, you can see we have around 27 million points, <laughs> which is quite a lot. Uh, I can see individual leaves. I'm not sure if this even works when rotating, but yeah, um, let's not view that. Let's just view the easy point cloud. So that's that. Now the final step before we, well, we could do more steps than that, but the final thing I want to do is during workflow, we're going to build a mesh. There are a few things here we could do. I want to use the dense cloud, of course, with the source data. But I'm thinking here if we should do a high or a medium. Start off with a medium, right? So 1.8 million, that's probably okay. I guess that this is gonna take a little bit. All right, so this is now the model. I'm not sure how much I can spin it, but hopefully a little bit. We can see as, as soon as I take away the texture, it's a little bit more tricky to, uh, uh, to see. So it's not super, uh, super detailed. And that's mostly because of my blurry, uh, <laughs> blurry, uh, what's it called? Uh, images. Okay, so when that was finished, I can now build a texture. I have that in the workflow, so let's just do that. So let's just export this and upload for um, Sketchfab. You could, could take just upload here, but I want to export the model. Uh, so let's do that. All right, so <laughs> this is the finished model. I think it's really cool. It is, um, of course, not amazingly detailed, but again, it is uh, really cool. And if you want to just review it a little bit more, you can check out the um, uh, whoa, check out the file in the description. All right, so this is the user interface of Autodesk Remake. We want to create the three. We're going to do it offline. You could do it online if you want to. And we need to use JPEGs in this case, so I converted them in Photoshop just like I show, show you before, but this time for a G page. G JPEG. <laughs> uh, here are the settings that we can do. I want to do a tree stump. I'm going to choose the quality ultra, of course. And uh, well, not, not really a lot, so I want to change here. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And it did say that it took a while, and yes, it did. Locally, it took around two hours, I think. To generate this model, which is uh, fairly similar to the one in, in uh, uh, Photoscan, uh, Agisoft, but you can see on the leaves, for example, there's slightly less detail, but I think it, it still looks very good. I'm, I'm happy with the results. You can see everything here. And uh, there are some cool tools here in Remake, and, and I mean, as I said before, it's probably, this is not a full guide, but maybe we'll, we'll go ahead and do that sometime, but because for example, this feature here, fixing holes, is uh, super easy, very nice user interface, and it's just very easy to do. And this is something that you can, uh, especially when scanning people, for example, this is a great feature to have. Now, we have around uh, 8 million polygons. We're going to change that down to 1 million, as we had in the other model. Just we have a, a comparable result with a mesh. And speaking of mesh, this is how it looks. It's pretty crazy, but it's also pretty cool to see how 
how the computer has uh, divided all these triangles into different patches and, and everything like that. So with that said, we export. You have a ton of options because it's Autodesk, but we're going to just export it as a simple OBG. Speaking of OBG, this is how it looks in the Sketchfab. So uh, again, there's a link in the description where you can check this out and you can compare it to the other model. There's also a bonus model if you want to check that out as well. So Autodesk Remake is free, um, so you can see here that there are some limitations, but again, I think it's pretty cool. If you need it for a quick project, you can rent it monthly. If you're a, a student, you can also get it for free by uh, just yeah, registering your student thingies. All right, so hopefully this video gave you some uh, introduction into uh, photogrammetry and scanning in general. Uh, if not, you can always watch my other videos where I test, for example, the sense scanner in depth also with Arctic and so on. So you can find those at the end, maybe even down below in the description. So uh, let me know what the next things about 3D scanning is that you want to know. There's so much to cover. So I think that what I want to do for the next step is to, of course, do a sense scanning outside as well, but also something a little bit more uh, in depth when it comes to explaining photogrammetry and explaining scanning in general. So expect some videos on scanning coming soon. There's been a bunch of 3D printing videos uh, lately, so I want to mix it up a little bit and make sure that if you're interested to 3D, which you should be because it's pretty epic, uh, there's so many areas to cover and I'm gonna try to cover a little bit more of them. So for example, 3D scanning is coming. We're gonna do more videos on this machine. We have some other machines as well. Uh, there's some scanning um, equipment that I'm looking to. Uh, hopefully I can get a review unit. But in general, make sure that you subscribe, that you like this video, that you let me know down in the comments what you want to see about scanning. What are the questions I can answer? The best question will uh, hopefully get a surprise or something. So um, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.